Hello, welcome to Mont Park Model Railway. In this video, we'll be looking at board and track joints and how I went about solving that problem on Mont Park. When Mont Park Model Railway was first being contemplated, there was a concept that it would be portable to the grand vision of being able to be displayed at exhibitions. To this effect, the basis of the layout was three modular sections, each three metres by one metre and able to be freestanding. When I started the build over six years ago to help keep the motivation going, I needed to get an operational state as soon as possible. And as a consequence, there were some aspects that I needed to solve later. One of those would be how to do the track joins between the layout segments. At the time, there was very little consideration for the practicalities of moving or transforming such a layout. As time passed, it was conceded that the layout would possibly be relocatable at best. The three sections could be unbolted, moved to an alternate location and reassembled. Six years later, there are now a few challenges. For example, with all the tracks laid across the three modules, there would be around 40 track joints where the track crosses from one module to another, as well as the challenge of maintaining smooth track crossings, it would also require maintaining power continuity for each of the joins. Then there would also be the, the 16 point control wirings that needs to pass from one board to another that would also need to be able to be disconnected and reconnected. For the 40 track joins, only two appear to be under a higher level board and inaccessible. Of the 40 joins, 13 cross at an angle and not at a nice right angle of 90 degrees. Some of the problems I'll need to solve is how to do the track rail joins and how to do the power joins to maintain continuity. Track join options could be just ballast the track in place, then cut the joint, use some, time, some type of bespoke rail alignment guide, or use some type of track rail alignment sleeper bed. And when it comes to the power join options, I could run dropper wires for each segment on the board at each rail sections, or jumper across the joints with some type of connector and terminal block and interconnect the, the terminal block. And another option for the wiring is to not change the wiring until I convert to DCC, where we would run a bus wire around the layout and just interconnect it that way. After some research, I now have some model tech Pro track rail alignment joining kits, which will likely do the job, but need to decide on a method to join the power cables at each of the joins. I came to a conclusion that it was possible to install the joining kits, but not actually cut the tracks at this point in time. The cables could be installed, but the rails aren't cut. They would continue to provide the electrical con continuity and the cabling could be left to another time or when actually required, which may well be not until the layout was to be relocated or moved elsewhere. Before undertaking installation, I was curious to know the thickness of the aligners in comparison to the existing sleepers. These images show the aligner plus rail is 4.43 millimetres and the existing Hornby Code 100 flexi track is 4.07 millimetres, which indicates the, the aligners are 0.36 millimetres difference. There is a risk here that once the aligners are installed, they create a hump in the rail. I decided to do a practice run on a section of portable track to test the method and also ensure locomotives run smoothly over their liners. 
knowing now there is a 0.36 millimeter thicker than the Hornby flexi track used on Mont Park. The first task is to cut away the chairs from the inside of the three sleepers either side of the joint location. Then remove the old existing sleepers. Then slide the aligners under the rail and into the required location. We'll use the P2 for some test runs back and forth across the aligner to verify a smooth run. The P4 having the four sets of driving wheels is the most sensitive to track height variations. That test tended to conclude there were no observable issues. I undertook the first install on the Peterborough to Litchfield upline. This is one of the most accessible locations and also a straight section of track. Fix the aligners in place using Pico track pins because they have a flush flat head and fit in the provided holes. It is handy to have a track gauge to verify the rail alignment has been maintained before committing to the final soldering of the aligners to the track. Decided to just solder on the outside of the rail where the chairs would normally be and not solder on the inside so that I avoid any flange obstructions. The drop wires are a good idea but not so good if there is a support brace directly under the location. Unfortunately this is the case for most of Mont Park. Coloured the aligners with a black sharpie marker. The side should have also been done before the installation which I'll do next time. Overall the result is quite good and the trains run through without any hint of aligners being present. We'll most likely only install the liners on the mainline tracks first and not necessarily on any of the sidings or yards. Moving on, there are a couple of places on the layout that are going to be difficult to access, like here. Fortunately, this location has a removable section and a manhole to allow access to the otherwise hidden joint. There are some locations that are going to be impossible to access. Don't quite know how to resolve that one yet. Anyhow, let's do the one that is accessible, which is also on a slight curve. Just like other locations, start by removing the existing sleepers, then slide the aligner into location and pin down. Solder into place and then it's ready to run. Always do a run through with your most problematic loco to ensure it is all is well before lifting the occupation and handing back to operations. And if you have several problematic locos that are sensitive to track issues, then run them through too. And this is one of my least problematic locos. Let's tackle a location where the track does not cross the joint at right angles but rather at a 45 degrees. My method here was to put the center of the aligners at the board junction which does result in both halves having a slight overhang. Pin and solder. I have been coloring over the solder, the pins and the aligners with a black sharpie marker. The last task would be to cut through the rails at the aligner using a dremel and a small cutting disc. Now we move onward to Peterborough Yards. There is a whole video, video on the Peterborough Yards points upgrade, but one section included adding aligners very close to one of the points which included a straight and one at an angle. As can be observed, once you start adding the aligners to Peterborough Yards, the effort really increases, but it is necessary. Following is a series of other challenges I had along the way. For aligners on a curve, it was helpful to use a track setter gauge to hold the track in place while soldering it to the aligner. Joints where there may be screws or other matter that prevents the aligners settling flat 
on the baseboard needs to be treated first. In this case, the screws needed to be sunk below the baseboard surface. Track joints that are close in close proximity to board joints are a bad idea, and even worse when they are also on a curve like these two. This one was possibly the worst, which later resulted in the need to replace the rails in the area to effectively relocate the track joint well away from the board joint and the aligner activity. It all started off relatively routine. It soon became apparent it was not going to be straightforward. Needing to remove the fish plates from the rails join should have been one of the warning signs. The track setter gauge was unlikely to rescue this one, especially with the issue with the outside rail. A set of spring pliers to hold the rails together seemed to be a reasonable solution to get the soldering done. The track setter gauge suggests it should be okay. However, the track standard gauge indicates otherwise, with a larger gap between the rails than recommended. The only solution was to move the rail joints elsewhere and put continuous rail through the board join area. It proved to be quite difficult to remove the previous aligners which had to be sacrificed. It was possible to retain the existing sleepers and their alignment and feed new rail through them and then put the install the aligners um, and once the rail was in place. Now it's on to ballasting the aligners. With all the aligners now installed, it's been possible to crack into the ballasting in earnest. Well, that is the end of this video. Trust it has been helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.